Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Hi, everybody. Listening to The Thing Is. I'm Shannon. Thanks for coming back to join us. Do you like ghosts and ghosts? Do you have fights and fights in? Do you have bad days and days in? Do you like ghosts and ghosts in? Ow, the thing is, ow, ow, the thing is, ow, ow, the thing is, ow, ow. Hey guys, this is Shannon. You're listening to The Thing Is. Thanks for coming back to join us. Um, I am here today, Sans Figs. Figs is not here. He had a mandatory meeting that he forgot about uh, until last minute, and so he is not here. But in his place, I have two great guests on the show, one returning, one brand new. Uh, first, from the No Offense podcast, it is comedian Doug Guillermo. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Shannon. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Oh, just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I, it feels like I was just here not it too does. long ago. It's weird. weird. I changed my shirt. It's the same <laughs> color as the other one. Is it really a different shirt? Yeah. Because you got caught in the rain? I got caught in the rain. Oh. I was sweating all day. I brought extra clothes just in case. Oh, you're prepared? Yeah. Uh, I was going to get a different color, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck. That's all I got. All black. I got to say, it looks like a uniform. <laughs> Uh, and then also joining the show for the first time, which I didn't realize until today, from the Panties in the Mouth podcast, it's comedian Andy Malafarina. Welcome to the show. What's up, Shannon? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. I'm fucking pumped. <laughs> I was saying to Andy before the show that um, I couldn't believe I haven't had him on already because I was looking through the gas archives to see what stories you told the last time and it doesn't exist. See, and I really, I really appreciate that because in your head, you're like, obviously Andy was on. I really thought that. <laughs> So I like that. That's just as that's like I might as well have been on. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so before we get into the segments, there are uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The first thing is, did you guys see the bear? The the show. Oh, the show. Yeah, I watched season one and I got most of the way through season two. Okay, what about what you? What the hell is the bear? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's a, it's a like um. It's, a, sh- it's chefs being sad about their dead relatives. <laughs> is that really what it is? Yeah, it's, yeah I basically. mean that's the quick funny version. <laughs> Wait, chefs like guys that cook shit. Yeah, it's about this dude who is uh his brother um his brother kills himself and in his uh inheritance he gets his brother's um restaurant in yeah. Chicago and he's like a Michelin star star chef and then he has to you know deal with the fucking people who've been there forever right. and they're like wait i gotta learn how to actually fucking cook oh what the fuck and then the whole time he's like i gotta get my brother's i gotta get my brother's fucking uh store work and also i'm so fucking sad about it being dead <laughs> Dude, what does this have to do with a bear like at the end oh that's like his nickname oh and then, yeah it's a, it's one of those like slow burn shows yeah. where like you'll see a thing in episode one and then the third episode of season two you'll be like that's why they did that thing before <laughs> oh oh it's one of them uh where you got to put the pieces together while you're watching yeah oh, but i think it like uh you get emotionally atta- yeah. attached to the characters pretty early on oh yeah which is why i really liked it but um, so the only reason I'm bringing it up, this is such a stupid thing, but my life is boring. And so this was the only thing I had to do to start the show. With. So I don't usually go to fancy restaurants. And in season two, they're, they go into like super fancy restaurants and they show you like how things work behind the scenes and how like the waiters are always like listening to anticipate what people's needs are before they have the chance to even ask about it. I don't know if you've gotten up to this point yet, Andy. Not that part, but I have been to fancy restaurants like that occasionally mm-hmm. and it's so uncomfortable is it like I, to like a fancy restaurant where you know like shit's like expensive and they're treating you like you're rich and i'm sitting there like i bet the waiter makes more money than me oh that's true like that <laughs> yeah. that may but the way the way that they like like wait on you hand and foot it makes me incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> i understand what you're saying yeah in this, though, it made it like as if it was a joy for all of the waiters to be pre- presenting you with these things. Oh, interesting. And so over the weekend, I went to, there was like this ladies night thing. And I really shouldn't Ooh. be going to ladies night thing because there was no guys there. Yeah, that's that's why it's... I know, ladies. but everyone, because everyone else is married. I'm the only single person. Right. I'm like, this is a waste of like a cute dress. I yeah. kind of feel like, but whatever. So I went and it was like, it wasn't necessarily a fancy restaurant, but the owner of the place owns like Michelin star restaurants. Mm-hmm. And so 
When we first get there, one of my friends recognized the owner when he was there. He's in like a chef jacket. He's behind the bar. And then she is like a very outgoing person. So she starts talking to him and she's like, oh, I'm bummed you guys don't have Fireball because she loves to do shots of Fireball. And she has a whole conversation <laughs> with him. He's wait, like, <laughs> wait, you're, you're, this is Staten you're, Island? Is you're female this? friends from Staten Island like, like Fireball. Fireball. Exactly. You guys got LITs. You get the <laughs> hell out of here right now. <laughs> <laughs> she chokes on cigarette smoke. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know smoking. if you know this, but I like fireball. When I was a little girl, it reminds me when we would take LITs on Memorial Day weekend at Rockaway Beach. <laughs> Yes, so after she said that. <laughs> yes, after that perfect yes. impression. Yes. After that fucking, cl- that lung clam she hacked up. Yeah. She's like, wait, yes, were you the there? <laughs> you I was the waiter. I was the bus boy. That's why I got black t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I, was get, I was getting fucking uh, uh, Globe Ultras from the basement. <laughs> <laughs> So she's having this whole conversation with the chef who's the owner, and uh, he's like, I don't even know what Fireball is, whatever. They're having this whole long conversation <laughs> about it. So then we talk with everybody, and then we- <laughs> I don't serve your types a lot. <laughs> yeah, I never have to buy that trash. <laughs> basically, yes. So we sit down at the table, we order our food, and then a waitress comes over with a tray with 10 yeah. shots of Fireball on it. Oh, so he she just w- had it in her glove compartment. <laughs> oh, they got it from the wait staff and the Mexicans in the back. They had the little fucking mini shots. God, Pedro, <laughs> Pedro, give me your liquor. <laughs> we start each one in our socks, you know, for after the dinner. <laughs> so 99 he- pieces, just do it if you want it. <laughs> So he he sent somebody to the yeah. liquor store down the block to get Fireball That's just wow. because it was mentioned. That's nice. And it was such a sweet thing. Yeah. And it's like, this is nothing I've ever experienced. And I just recognized it from the bear. And it's like, wow, people live a different kind and of life. And this is a fancy restaurant that you're talking it, about. This place is it wasn't, it was like not like mid level. It's yeah. not fancy, but not like garbage. But mm-hmm. the owner comes from like Michelin star restaurants. Oh. And, and it so didn't it's have just any of that didn't have any of that like corporate shit where people are always like, wait, is that against the rules? The guy's like, no, I'm just going to go get him fireball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he was the owner. So he was just like, yeah, whatever he, he do wants. Whatever the fuck he yeah. Wants. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is your friend attractive? I think I, I would say yes. Oh, so that's why he did it. Like if we walked in and we're like, you guys got fireball, like get the fuck out of here, you scoundrels, <laughs> fucking leave. So I when I think... yeah, he's like, yeah, other stores have it. Go to those. Yeah, exactly. This isn't the place for you. <laughs> you might like Firelog Tavern down the street. <laughs> you hicks. What I actually I think he was just like an amazing people person. Yeah. Because like I, I was watching him throughout the night and he was like making like direct eye contact with people, having conversations and like he just he really nailed it. He was such a great people that's person. I'm just chef, not though. that kind that's of person. That's, yeah, that's, that's a fun. good. That's a good business owner. Cause yeah, you can have those. You can have those moments. Um, can where, you blur that when you post it? I'd, I'd just rather not have like family members. Yeah, yeah. That's also not from that night. That's from a other, other day with strangers that have nothing to do right. with me. So I don't. I don't want that up. I'm sorry. I really thought that was the no, guy. My bad. No, was it wasn't. <laughs> that's strangers. my uncle Jeff. Yes. Those are strangers we met at the bar. Um. So yeah. Anyway, that was it. That was fun. That's fucking weird how that fucking happened. It was sweet. It just makes you feel like, oh, that was nice. Well, here's the thing. Every time, like, I've worked in restaurants, you know, fucking all that bullshit. But the head chef, he's always, like, a nice guy or the owner. But to his staff, he's a complete cunt all the time. Like, he's, like, shaking hands. And then he goes in the back. He's like, hurry the fuck up. What are you guys doing? Let's go. That's the part. That's the part. I you. That's the part I've, I loved about the bear is they have a lot yeah. of that in the show. All right, now I got to see the show. It's where Because really I used to work. I, now, I never worked at like a Michelin star or anything like that, but I worked in kitchens for a little bit. And it is a lot of that where it's like fast paced, high stress, and then you end up fucking screaming bad things at each other. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. you make up later when you're having a beer together. <laughs> yeah, because you both went through hell every goddamn dinner shift that happens. Yeah. It's so stressful that when you're done, you're just like, dude, we made it. Because every shift you'll be cruising and then one thing is going to happen that you're never going to catch up because of. Right, and right, then, right. So you're always like, it's yeah, it's always like going, okay, and then at a certain point, you're on the ropes right. for the rest of the night. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's why they got those shots of fireball. They didn't want to be behind <laughs> anything else. They're like, come on, we're going to be behind. We don't get this Long Island yeah, let's get fireball. Let's give them a bunch of shots. They'll forget what fucking time it is yeah. and how long their goddamn souffle is The lady just asked for French fries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never worked in back of house. I've always worked in the front of the house. So it's always like everything is going on, but you can't ever show anything. Right. Where I feel like in back of house, yeah. like you can explode. And, I, yeah. That's why I, I, I did both. I, I worked in the kitchen for a while. I tried serving for like a little bit in that element where i'm like wait i can't i can't call this guy a gay slur i yeah, can't yeah. do that and you're like i don't know what if i want to <laughs> i'm just curious too many to remember <laughs> uh, <laughs> but i was like i can't okay i'm gonna have to go back in the kit because that's the that's more the way i communicate is screaming but you're like i'm not uh, don't take this personally i just need to yell because i'm a fucking animal yeah, exactly that's just how you got to get the frustration out and we all, who doesn't communicate by screaming at you? You work with Lewis, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really a screamer though. Yeah. But it was like I've never, I've never really served tables. Maybe like once or twice, and I'm like, this is not for me. But as a bartender, you can be a little shittier to people. You can, yeah. 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 So I prefer that better. Well, again, well, it goes back to. Uh, the, Obviously, you're going to be the hostess. They want to see a nice looking face when they walk in. They don't. They don't want to see like me or him standing <laughs> at the fucking podium welcoming people into their restaurant. A bald white man. Was he, yeah, yeah, was he, I don't know if this makes me a dick, but yeah, it's just like I want to see like a pretty lady, or like a yeah. gay dude. Or That's something. true. Yeah, gay guy <laughs> works too. And That's I, very I'm, true. I'm, I'm, li- I'm coming from a standpoint of like if I come up to your table, I'm like. Ugh. He's going to fucking, <laughs> he's going to sweat and get his yeah, hair and all the his food. His beard's going to go into soup. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see me bringing me food. <laughs> I want to see a fucking pretty girl or something. I don't know if exactly. that makes me a fucking dickhead, but. Yeah, we used to have one at a restaurant, Mariana Mancuso was a half Brazilian, half Italian, and just like gorgeous. And you'd walk in and be like, I don't even care if the food sucks. I'm yeah. just going to stay here and just look at. And it also, I feel like it keeps it keeps the the patron from popping off too much because it's true. like if you have like a a pretty girl, you're not yeah, gonna. Yeah. F- or, although I've seen plenty of time, that's why I always when people complain about their bosses, I go, "Well, wait, what do you like at restaurants?" Because there's some people who are like, "This is the only time I've ever been in charge of someone, <laughs> and I'm going to abuse it." <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, like that, like seeing how someone treats a waiter makes you realize if they're full of shit yeah. or not. That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah, and also like working in the service industry, like everybody says, like really humbles you as a person, and everybody should do that at some point in their life. It does. It humbles the living shit. Yeah. Out Especially of you. if you're front of house, the whole job is just like taking it in the ass. Yeah, you yeah, know what shit. I mean, and like being like. This doesn't hurt. This doesn't hurt. <laughs> sure, yeah. I, I overheard you calling me a half a fair. <laughs> you know what? Here's yeah. your fucking lima beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to now our first segment. And typically the first segment is we talk about uh, bad dates. And uh, so, Doug, you've been on before. The last yes. episode you were on was episode number 272. So I'm going to do a high-level recap for the mm-hmm. listeners of the stories. We're not going to go into detail. But you guys can go back to that episode to listen to it. So you talked about... Um, Taco Bell before and almost hook up, and then um, a po- you kind of pooped your pants. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and then um, you went to a restaurant with a chick, and this is a similar story, mm-hmm. um, where you knew you had to poop, so you faked a bloody nose That's right. so that you can go into the bathroom. I did shove the thumb right up my fucking <laughs> nose to make sure that thing bled out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have also just like covered your nose with a napkin and be like, oh, my nose is bleeding. Yeah, but no then she also know. thought I was doing coke the whole night in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't, which by the way, I was just on a date recently and the same fucking thing happened. We get to this girl. Now, I drove two and a half hours into Long Island to oh, date God. this girl. And she's a cool girl, whatever. And I get a rare steak at the steakhouse or whatever. For some reason, as I'm getting older, I can't handle the fucking red meat anymore, even though I love rare meat, but I keep, my body just doesn't handle it. I get a, a porterhouse steak, completely rare in the middle, still cold, all that shit. Love it, right? We get to her house. No sooner than I cross the threshold of her do- I immediately have to shit. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. I would, immediately. I would say going forward, before you go on any date, take an emodium. Yeah, but then I'm fucked up for like three, four days. But is it worth it? Shit in your pants. <laughs> no, I don't shit my pants. I just have to shit. Like that one time, like with the one girl, I, I, I almost, I, I almost kind of did. 
but whatever. <laughs> this it, time I didn't. It's crazy how many similar uh, experiences you and me are having. Because yeah. like you're thin and in shape, and I didn't think you'd be having this many almost shit in your pants stories as <laughs> Dude, I have. I don't understand. Like it's always on a date too. Like something bad I fucking eat or whatever. You're anxious? Fuck it is. No. I'm oh, not anxious. Okay. I just don't know what it is. Like my body can't handle certain things like it used to when I was in my twenties. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm start. It sucks that this is how I have to fucking figure it out every goddamn. <laughs> on dates. And there's no way I could have hit it because her bathroom and then the living room's right here. And I spent forever in there. And I sent a picture of my friend with my hand <laughs> over my face trying not to laugh. And there's no way she couldn't have heard it. But when I came out of the bathroom, she made the narrative for me. She goes. Are you all right? I go, yeah, that steak, like, Turkish because you were throwing up in there. I go, that's what I was yep. doing. Yeah, that's <laughs> Wait, exactly. <less> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I was doing. I was throwing up. Is there a way, like, as comedians, to joke your way out of that and still seal the deal? Well, I have the sh- sorry, the shit in the pants. Yeah, if you shit your pants, or if you're, like, stuck in the bathroom for a long amount of time in a small apartment, and, like, you know she knows what you're doing. Of course. Can you, can this be recovered? I, it was. I, I still ended up fucking that, her that one? night. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This recent one. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, I hit it. I took liquid soap and put it on toilet and cleaned out my asshole in her sink. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know that. If she ever listens to this, she'll know. But uh, oh, I just, listen, I had to. There was no denial. Like, what was I going to do? Go around the corner to the friendlies, mm-hmm. like, by her house? I couldn't. <laughs> I had to go. And I'm like, and I was just texting my friend Max. And I'm like, dude, I have to. And he goes, just do it. And I'm like, fuck. There's no <sighs> way around it. Dude, this is why I'm so happy I'm married. Because, like, I've had so many of these stories, but it's, like, yeah. while being married. <laughs> like, one time, one time before me and my wife, before me and my wife lived together, um, I had to, oh, yeah, where she lived was about an hour or so from my job. And I started work at, like, 530. So I had to get up super early. And I get up. She has, like, this tiny-ass toilet. And I, oh, no. I'm a big, I take up andy size <laughs> shit. And, uh, size and shit. I just like flush nothing flush nothing oh. and I'm like try it but like I can't be late to this job so I just have to be like hey, hey sweetie so <laughs> your toilet's full of shit and it won't flush alright I have to leave <laughs> like I just fucking I had to wake her up at 4 in the morning to be like your toilet's full of shit and I I can't do sh- nothing about yeah. it and no and ever since then I've learned fuck because sometimes i take shits in stages so you take the first shit flush and then fuck because that was the fucking worst i mean i literally i canceled i canceled a show that night to unclog my wife's toilet oh jesus because <laughs> he was no she was like she was like hey it'll be fine it'll clear up later and she and then i get a text later in the day she's like nothing i'm doing works wow. i had to, i had to buy like a because don't, don't get me wrong i'm taking big boy shits but she had a tiny ass fucking toilet How she was tiny also is like toilet? it's like this cup yeah, yeah, it was that. Uh, I was like, just throw it in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, at that point, just stick a shovel in there. Just rip it off and yeah, throw it. Come on, in. how much do you love me? But now nah, I had to get one of those like Robo Rooters or whatever the fuck yeah, yeah, they're yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I was doing, I was like Robo working. Robo Rooter. Whatever the what what what, what I said. Roto. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I it like was the Robo one. Rooter. It was the one time. It was the. Trust me, that mortified me, and I've been top notch about my shit ever since. Had a boy. So she was like playing with your poop for hours Making after castles. you left. Not playing with it. But <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't just like, you know what? I do love him. <laughs> How long into the relationship was that? Uh, that was her second. Okay, yeah, cause she was at one point. So it was at least like. You know what? We weren't married yet, but we were probably like three or four years in. Okay. Damn. So you like already love each other. It's like you're in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, at that point, it's yeah. not as bad. You know what I mean? This was like the first time I ever went to the girl's house. For me, I, I just, because like I just started going to the gym regularly like a year ago. Yeah. So, and I, but I still have a gut. Like I'm getting a little bit more muscle, but I still have a gut. I've lived the majority of my life as yeah. like the fucking fat friend on the TBS sitcom. Yeah, yeah. So like I'm super sensitive to doing fucking that that's the fat guy like yeah. doing that shit. <laughs> so just like clogging up toilets. I was like fucking <laughs> mortified from that. <laughs> and so now you are with your wife forever, right? Like do you remember bad date stories from before dating her? Yeah, kind I had well cuz the 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 girl I dated right before her, it was like 
Um, that was no, actually, that was an awesome date story because she had been a lesbian for four Ooh. years prior, and she was. I was basically her being like, "Let me see if I like dick again." No, no, no. <laughs> and then um, we were uh, we were like hooking up, and I you could see it in her eyes. She was like, "Oh yeah, I do." <laughs> I was like, I don't, even, "I don't even know if I was just. I don't even know if I was doing a job. I was just breaking the seal <laughs> off of like a four year drought." <laughs> but then the part that sucked is I still lived with my parents, and she was wearing. And, and um, I'll do I'll do respect to her. It was a wonderful evening. I thank her so much for it. Uh, but she was wearing a like five dollars sparkly dress from like TJ Maxx or yeah. something. And I was still Plants. living. I was still living with my parents. And I'm like, my mom would always sleep on the couch. And as I'm like trying to get her out, I just see my mom wake up, and I'm like, she definitely thought I got a hooker. God damn it! <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say there were like sequins everywhere afterwards. Oh yeah, that's always oh. a good way to get caught. Oh, and then we um and then we hung out a second time. And this is not the first time that this has happened to me, where I was like kind of into a girl. And then she started saying the N word. <laughs> yeah, I've had it. Cause like, look at me, look at me. Like, I look like I look like a guy who's like, he'll say it with us. <laughs> yeah, exa- that's exactly what you. And he's from Jersey too. He'll, he'll, yeah, he'll yeah. be like, he'll say. He'll so join like, in. So was dad. I've had that problem before. Where, uh, cause I remember the second date, we were at a bar. Uh, we were at a bar. And I was like, yeah, this is a pretty cool spot. She was like, I love this bar. There's no. <laughs> oh. I was like, yo. All right. We'll have sex again, but I'm done. Yeah, exactly. This. You know that girl who says the N word <laughs> is game for anything. You know yeah, that as right? soon as that pops out of her mouth, yeah. you're like, oh, she's a whore. Yeah. yeah that's, that's amazing. But yeah, that's not. I've had that two other times. The where, N word thing? Yeah, where girls are like super <laughs> comfortable saying the N word in front of me. And I was just like, yo, chill. <laughs> I mean, chill. That feels like just life in Staten Island because That's like true. in Staten Island, like we're working at a bar, people mm. will say literally anything mm. and it's just like, oh, we're in Staten Island and all of this goes. Yeah. I've heard the N word yeah. and then I heard, especially with that whole Bud Light thing. Oh, yeah. Where people like, fun. oh, they're like, oh, you don't serve that here, right? Like they have like a whole big thing and I'm like, this is such, it's such a garbage oh, place. Oh, my favorite one is I had a, fa- <laughs> right after the Bud Light thing, I had a, <laughs> I had a family member. We were going over to their house, and we walk in, and we have beer, and I just hear one family go, you're not bringing that tranny fluid in here, are you? <laughs> I was like, yo, dude. God bless them. I was like, nah, dude, I love America. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking amazing. That's fucking great. I worked a party where um, at one point during it, this is a while back, at one point during it, uh, one of the surprises for the person whose party it was was to have um, like someone dressed up as Trump come into the party and it was like a sweet 16 or something they were like young people so it's all kids and this like trump figure comes in and holding up a sign that's like trump 2024 or whatever mm. and the crowd goes wild and these are 16 year olds yeah wow. dude, dude oh dude i i i know this dude um is like a family friend he's like 19 he's like hyped about trump people are like fans of trump yeah, of you course. Know, yeah, they're, they're like hyped about them. You don't hang flags outside of your house to somebody you hate. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you see those <laughs> flags everywhere. The fu- one dude in Fairfield, New Jersey, uh, got an order from the town because he had this huge sign on his house mm. that just said "Fuck Biden, Trump 2024." They ordered him to take it down because as soon as you get off of Route 46, it hits you right in the face, right next to Versailles Diner. Uh, you know where that is? There's this White House and. Just by looking at the house, he didn't even need the flag. You knew he voted for Trump. Like, you just know that fucking siding's falling apart and shit, the paint's chipping. And it just had huge letters saying, fuck Biden, Trump 2024, all this other bullshit. I wonder, I, like, how far he pushed it to get away with it. Like, if you just put, like, an N over the C or something, yeah. just so it's not a curse word, if they would let that go, or if it's really because of a political leaning. They let, Probably both. There's this one mm. house near me that I don't know what, like... I've almost crashed my car driving by this house. It's like you drive by and it's it's not a it's it's a decent house, not very big, and there is minimum 20 mannequins in the front yard. This is New Jersey. In New Jersey, is it Montclair? yeah. Montclair? No, I live over I live over by uh North Brunswick, so it's like huh. near there. Um but yeah, dude, there's li- and they're all dressed up in different outfits. And it's fucking weird. And they're like mannequin mannequins, not like statues. No, no, yeah, they're mm. mannequins. And I, I used to, because I broke, I broke my finger, and I used to drive by it to go to like physical therapy for that. And every single time, I would, I forgot it was there, and I'd be like, "What the fuck?" Because yeah. it's like they're all in different outfits, and it's all like, 
it, there, there's like a sign that's just like don't believe anything and all this other stuff <laughs> and it's like fuck? that's fucking i'm surprised it's still i'm surprised no one i don't know have done, like tried to get that i mean they I can't imagine they haven't tried. I just, I bet the person who owns the house is like, I know all the rules. <laughs> Did they change the outfits? Mm, I'd have to drive by, uh, I'd have to drive by again. I'd, I, I'd assume, but yeah, mm. it's weird. It's like literally 20 to 30 mannequins in throughout the yard in all different positions wearing all different outfits and it's unnerving. But I don't know if you're both too young for this, but there was a Goosebumps book. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly that, but not mannequin. It was like little dolls all on the okay. front yard. And then, of course, they came to life at night. But that's, what, really? that's what it made me think of. But I'm 75. I'm like, <laughs> so it's, a long, it's a long time ago. So hazy on Goosebumps. All I remember, I remember there was one where they kept spitting out blue goo. But beyond that, I don't remember the details of Goosebumps. Yeah, I don't remember those fucking books. I remember the, the plants. The father turned into a plant and he started eating like people in the neighborhood. Oh. Yeah. Stephen King? <laughs> No, this was another Goosebumps book oh. where the guy's like half plant, half human, and they store the real dad inside the fucking oh, closet. I that. So yeah, yeah. Yes, I remember that. And he comes one. out and he's got like fucking plants growing out of his hair and shit like that. Hey, Jesus. We, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Oh, I remember that cover. Stay out of the basement. I do remember that one. Yeah. Oh, good times. There was also oh, I remember that one too. There was also um, what is it? One of the Stephen King like a uh, trilogy things where there was um. Stephen King was the actor in it. Yeah. And then like a meteor crashed or something. He goes out and touches it. And then like all this green stuff starts growing all over his body. No, no one knows this. Maybe someone no, in the I chat. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Let me know. Was it one of the Stephen King's <laughs> movie that bombed that nobody It was on? like a like a short. What was like Stephen King's short stories things? I don't remember. But don't he know. acted in it. Anyway, I remember what you're talking on. about though. Steve, like the creepy tales. Something. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. I remember fine. <laughs> Let's move on. So. Oh. So we're, did you guys both tell your bad date stories was that the one you were going to tell well there's that one and then there was one recently too where it was this uh this cute girl from romania she was an artist and everything beautiful girl like fuck i don't even know how it happened like as far as looks go out of my fucking league and i'm just like whatever however this happens it's great uh for years my friend had lived on uh, you don't live there anymore but he lived on elizabeth street or elizabeth in new york in soho over there and he had this beautiful penthouse apartment and if you go you always have access to the roof and if you go on the roof you have the view of uh the brooklyn bridge uh the freedom tower and then you could see and it worked like a charm Jesus. i would take girls up there constantly i've gotten laid on that rooftop more times than i could fucking count and i always i would always lie and be like no i've never taken a girl up here or whatever <laughs> like like my, my buddy had a my buddy had his fucking pilot's license Wow! Yeah, dude, oh, he would fucking... that is a goddamn gem. <laughs> yeah, to keep and his, in your back his yeah, his family had like a little plane. That, that oh, dude, and he wait, would just, how do you get laid while you're flying a plane? Uh, I mean, I, it, it, it's probably a lot of coasting. You could probably, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean. I, I'm assuming it's after, but there's yeah, no maybe. knowing my buddy, he was a fucking, he was an animal. He definitely got his dick sucked while he was flying. Oh, that of course, plane. you cannot yeah. take a girl up in the plane without getting your dick sucked. Yeah. Like that, that's just a go-to thing. Well, I feel like also just the excitement of like living after driving in like one of those tiny right, little planes right. is like enough to like mm -hmm. get aphrodisiac. Yeah, oh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, the devil, because it's like we made it. We yeah, did this together. <laughs> yeah. It didn't kill me. <laughs> Nobody <awesome>. died. <laughs> and uh, so I've been taking girls up to this rooftop for years. And and you said this is just like your friend's place. It was, yeah. Okay. For years he lived there, so he used to like get me into the door. But now since he moved out, this he's been gone out of there for like maybe five, six years, some bullshit like that. I would have to wait by the door and pretend like my friend was asleep and sneak in behind somebody else and go up to the rooftop. So again, I'm with this Romanian girl. Beautiful, <laughs> so funny, <laughs> beautiful girl. Like I said, this used to work like a charm, man. That oh no, the, the view worked. you described, I got a little wet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you still have access? <laughs> you want to come with me, big boy? Anytime. It's only down the street. So. I would take girls up there all the time, and then, like, I, I never thought it would end, right? And this is something I would, I'd started doing, like, 24, I'll 25. never lose yeah, this room. This will always be the go-to, right? So I take this girl up here. She's from a different country, okay? Mm. She's not supposed to fucking be they here. They don't got roofs in her yeah, country. Yeah, exactly. There's no, not this high. In Romania, no, they don't make buildings that tall. They don't go past that they second at story that largest, over there. Yeah, the, the largest wooden church is there, and they stopped there. That was it. It's fucking... 
So I bring her up there. We're, you know, I'm doing my usual. No, I never taken a girl up here before. Whatever. We start... And yes, I totally live here. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Mm. No, that part I, I was telling the truth. I was like, this is my friend's play, whatever. So we start messing around and everything, and and then all of a sudden. I hear the door fucking slam open, bang, and I'm like, oh shit, nobody's ever come up here at all. Mm-hmm. Like every time, I got my hands down her pants as the guy's coming up. I yank my hands out of her pants, and he's like, what are you doing up here, but some fucking Albanian? He's like, what are you doing up here, buddy? And I was like, oh, I was up here before. My friend lives here in uh, apartment P6 because we don't have an apartment P6 here. And I'm like, well, I, I was up here. He let me up here. I tried asking him, and he goes, I've never seen you in this building before. Um, what, what are you doing? I go, I lost my keys. He goes, then why were your hands down her pants? I go, well, that's where I lost them. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he's like, listen, I'm not going to call the cops this time. But if I see you here again, I'm going to. Uh, and she turned red. She almost started crying. Oh, no. And I was like, now, how do I get out of this one? Like, what, what do I say? So we're walking down the street and I'm just like, uh, well, uh, shit happens. You know, if you want me to drop you off, I mean, we, and she's like, no, I, I still want you to come back with me. I was like, oh. Thank Christ. And you went back to your apartment and you shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how much I like you. I'm going to shit in your fucking hotel room in Times Square. Let me, I'll show you. But yeah, that was almost, I almost lost. And was that the last time you ever went there? That, I, yeah, I haven't gone back. I don't want the guy to call <laughs> it. And now I'm thinking if we get arrested, this girl's from Romania. What are they going to do to her? Oh, like, she, like her visa's fucked? Or like, I don't know what's going to happen. That's the only thing I'm thinking about. Then once the guy let me go, I was like, <laughs> oh, and I, I was trying to play it cool, but on the inside, I'm like, oh, no, I just sent this girl to prison. Like, because I'll just have my friend bail me out. I don't know what <laughs> she's going to do. I'll be like, good luck. <laughs> Heard New York City prisons are rough on women. Wow. Yeah. I can't, you got yourself out of it. I did, yeah. And it all worked out in the end somehow. Um, okay. We, uh, we took the segment a little long, which is my fault. But did you tell, was that the story that you had to tell for the bad date segment? Uh, I, I've never had like an outrageous date. I just remember like the one time I ever used the dating app. I, first off, the girl substantially, she was a pretty girl, but substantially bigger than the picture. And then as she's like, as, as we're like on the date, she just like is go. And one of the factoids she throws out, she's like, yeah, so I still live with my ex-boyfriend. I go, yo, you need to stop going on dates till you figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> and then also too I've had many a time where I hook up with a girl and then she wakes up and she goes what the fuck oh. <laughs> I literally I got woken up to a girl going yo <laughs> yeah, what a self esteem <laughs> yeah and then I was like and I, cause it, it hurt if we were super hammered but I literally was so like my move in college I'd get hammered I wouldn't get pussy and then I'd go back to my dorm room and I'd listen to like system of a down and watch Missy Elliott videos <laughs> <laughs> and then and then one of my one of my dorm it's like banging on my door and I was like what's up he's like Rachel wants to make sure you're okay and I was like well, let's go and I'm like getting carried to her room and then we were like messing around she wakes up she's like scared because she forgot I was there and then she was like we didn't have sex right and I go no and she's like all right thank god I'm on my period then I remember and then oh, no. later that day you know you ever have this when you eat pussy too hard and you like you're right under yeah, your yeah. tongue it hurts it starts hurting I was like Damn, I must ate a lot of pussy last <laughs> night. I must ate a lot. I must have ran down that Red River oh, hard last night. Oh, she had her period. Oh, I didn't remember oh. it, but <laughs> oh like, my god! So like, yeah, no, I do. I do taste copper. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you didn't wake up like, like a vampire, steel. just like <laughs> <laughs> over your face. <laughs> No, but I was. Just, it always made me laugh that she was just like, what are you doing here? I was like, you asked me to come over here, lady. You wanted to make sure I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the girls that wear too much makeup and you're making out with them and you don't realize and then you go home and you look at yourself in the mirror and it looks like your fucking lips disappeared and it scares the shit out of you every time. You got that white foundation on your fucking That's bottom so lip. Funny. All right, we're going to move over to our next segment, which is bad things. Bad things with you. This is Bad Things. For our show, we talk about fight stories, physical altercation. So again, Doug, you were on episode 272. Um, you talked about having uh, again high level have had a back injury. Mm-hmm. You yelled at a guy in a bus, and then you weren't able to do anything, and the guy pushed you, and you fell right out of the bus. <laughs> yeah, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> you also told two stories about your crazy dad. Mm. One about um, a dog peeing on his lawn, and then he ran out with a baseball bat. Another one of him defending a girl's honor when mm-hmm. a guy was beating her up. Yeah. Do you have another fight story? Um, 
I fought my best friend three times. Uh, to, <laughs> to, as an adult? As an adult, yeah. In, in my 20s, yeah. We, we uh, I don't know what the fuck was wrong. We would start drinking and just one thing would be said and we're fucking fighting in the middle of a dance floor in Hoboken, New Jersey. Typical Jersey trash. And we would just start fucking fist fighting. Uh, but the last time that that happened, again, Hoboken, New Jersey, always bad shit that fucking happens there. And it's at this joint called Green Rock, which is a real seedy, like, coked out fucking shithole. And um, he says something along, like, you don't know Alyssa like I do, whoever this fucking bitch was. I don't remember who it was. So I was like, no, fuck, you don't know. So I push him. We start going at it. We start throwing our fists at each other. We start hitting each other. The bouncer, gra- and this is a giant, like, sauced up black dude. And I was like maybe about like 200, 210 at the time. Picks me up by the hem of my fucking <laughs> neck like a kitten and throws me out with one hand. Like he slingshots me out of the fucking bar. And I'm sitting there on the ground like, ah, oh, fuck. Like I think he breaks. Well, all of a sudden, my friend comes flying <laughs> out the door after me. And he goes flying on the fucking ground. We get up. We look at each other. We start laughing. Like we're kind of bleeding or whatever. Like let's just go to the bar down the street. And uh, you know that's how guys reacted. It's we like, get like DJ Jazzy Jeff when yeah exactly yeah we got to remember out, broke I'm a like, fucking hip. I, see it. I couldn't remember which fucking show it was. Yeah. So we would fight. That was the last time me and him fought, and we beat the shit out of each other. We both got thrown out by this massive giant black bouncer. And so, like, when you guys would fight, it wasn't like how, like, boys will, like, start wrestling and then it turned into something real. It's like, you guys actually got mad at each other yeah. and for real fought each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we for real fought each other. But, you know, it would just happen. Boys. We're just young guys <laughs> filled with testosterone. We were retarded. <laughs> and we'd start fighting over. And it was never anything important. It was never mm-hmm. anything, like, like, who knows a girl better? Who gives a shit? <laughs> no God knows where the fucking girl is now. I mean, we're still friends, but, you know, we beat the shit out of each other. And that's it. So you don't get into a lot of fights. No, I mean, I've been into fights before. Like, I, I would train to fight for a while, mm-hmm. and I had a show one night, and I was sparring the night before, and I forgot my mouthpiece, and a kid lands a square uppercut right on my lip, and it cuts my lip to where there, it started clotting. Uh, so the shit show that I was on, there was no stage. I was at a bar, and as I'm talking, <laughs> the blood clot flies out <laughs> onto the fucking table <laughs> in front of the Yo. ladies, and blood starts going down my lips. So I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like wiping the fucking blood off of my chin. I'm like, yeah, so, and I'm looking at the <laughs> clot on the ground. I'm like, yeah, so, like I was saying, kids are gay. And, uh, <laughs> and they I'm see it fly they out? They see it. Oh. They see the fucking blood clot fly. Oh. And the girl, about, but now I have blood pouring down my chin, and, I can't, <laughs> and I'm sitting there trying to wipe it away, and I can't. This fuck, and he was a little bastard kid too. It wasn't a big kid. He goes to hit my body, and the punch bounces off and catches me right under the fucking. Wait, lip. so he saw you bleeding and was like, "Oh, what I should do is hit him." Yeah. What are you supposed to do? Wait, you're just. It was a fight, though. You yeah, said, yeah. I was like training. A, I'm yeah. sorry, but like a sanctioned fight, right? Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. training in a dojo. I mixed dojo. the two stories together. Yeah. I thought that you're on stage now. This thing happened from the night before. Yeah. And then Someone just uppercutted you, you on stage? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I got uppercut. <laughs> You're bleeding all over my wife, asshole. <laughs> you punched in the fucking face. No, I was. Okay, I got, got punched it. before the fucking show. Yeah. Right, better jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking suck. And, I, and Andy's like, yes, that's what happened. He did uppercut him because he was bleeding. <laughs> and she was an English lady. She was like, I'm I. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you, lady. I, I don't know what to do. Did you finish your set? Set? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you always got to finish your set. Whether you're bombing, <laughs> bleeding, doesn't matter. You just got to keep going. Uh, Andy, um, I'll be honest. I like I grew up in the I grew up in like a stereotypical suburban setting. <laughs> I don't have like a lot of fight stories, but I did go to a lot of like hardcore shows and stuff like oh. that. So I've had um, I've had scraps and stuff. There was one when we were in college. It was funny actually. This wasn't even a hardcore show. We were going to see this band called set your goals who are like a pop punk band but they kind of have they kind of have a vibe like a hardcore band so they have they have like a lot of fans like that who are like tough guys and um mm. so but the rest of the show was like synth rock bands like there's this band called the secret handshake who did a cover of uh fucking like miley cyrus songs and shit so it was like a weird mix but 
I'm in college. I'm with all, all my friends are like Philly dirtballs. So I'm like the DD and they're all getting hammered. And we drive to the show as we're walking in. The first thing one of my friends says to anyone, he just sees a guy who he doesn't like his face. He has a hoodie for this band, My Children, My Bride. And he looks at him and goes, nice My Children, My Bride shirt, you fat. <laughs> like that's how the night starts <laughs> and i'm just like what are we doing guys <laughs> so that must have pissed the guy off but not enough to cause shit before his favorite band was on <laughs> <laughs> so we go into the show we're i'm not drunk they're hammered we're all having a fun time just being idiots we go see we go see the band set your goals and it's funny, looking back now, I could tell who the guys were that was going to start some shit, because as we're, like, doing circle pits and stuff like that, there's just these, there was one dude, he had, I don't know if you ever seen this with, like, punk guys, where they have, like, the, the trucker type hat with the brim flipped yes. up, and they write stuff on, this one kid, and I want to emphasize, like, all these bands are, like, emo girl bands, and there's this one punk dude in the corner with his brim flipped up, and it just says, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that guy's going to be a problem. I don't know how or why, but he's going to be a problem. So set your goals finishes. And apparently that was the dude my friend called a fag. <laughs> so he jumps out of nowhere and just starts like sucker punches my friend. And like I'm standing there being like, wow, that was like I love set your goals at the time. I was like, wow, that was a great set. Holy shit. Because <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> so they're all fighting. And I like I said, I've never been in a. So I never like I wasn't like really throwing punches, but I was me. Mediating. I was like, I was finding people and tearing them off my friends and all this other <laughs> shit. And um, yeah, I got like a little fucking scraped up, but eventually the bouncers came and stopped it. And then, um, no, this was the funniest part. We go back afterwards. We go to McDonald's to like calm down and get some food. And then we look and my buddy, Greg, he's like bleeding from his nose. And we're like, damn, you probably broke your nose. We should probably go to the hospital. And he goes, he goes, no, 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 no. I'm going to go to bed, and if I wake up and I got black eyes, then I'll know it's broken. And I take a good look at Greg, and I see his nose is over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, dude, your nose is on the left side of your face. <laughs> I think it's broken. So we took him to the hospital, and then that's when... Like, going to the hospital after a long day is when you realize you're actually a bad person because I was <laughs> sitting there like, we should have just went home and had Greg figure it out the next day. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, this sucks. Cause you could have said it right there. We all sat in the hospital for like three hours waiting them to like fix, fix Greg's nose. But yeah, it, it's yeah. I've I've never been in like a fight fight like. But I will say this: I feel I feel like I should have because now that I'm older and I've been working out more and I've been going to more like hardcore shows, that's when I feel like the rage build up. <laughs> it's <just laughs> like now as an adult, um, my favorite thing is to go to hardcore shows, drink like five Miller Lights, and just be a problem. Because <laughs> there's this thing called because I've been noticing ever since I've been going, I'm like a bigger dude than most of the people there, <laughs> so yeah. like I could just. You can just like run around and hit people. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the thing is, pe nobody looks at you and goes, I'm going to fight that guy. Yeah. They don't do that. Well, like in the one day, I, dude, I'm like hammered at this show, seeing this band called Jesus Peace. And for some reason, I just decide I go full speed and I like fucking just jump into a part of the crowd. Yeah. But like, that's the vibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Our everyone shows are fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. But yeah, that, never, never been in like a fight fight like that. So you've never like, Punch someone in the face. I re yeah, I, one time in fourth grade, I forget the exact. I remember these girls were having me and this dude square up, and I remember it being like, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I have no problem with him. Why would I hit him? <laughs> I just remember. I remember it being like. I remember thinking it was the worst, and I was just like, I don't want to hit someone unless I hate them. You know, so I've usually been a pretentious dildo who's like, let's just use our words, guys. What the fuck? It was an accident. Oh. Why? Yeah, I, was I hit it. I'm sorry, I hit it by accident. <laughs> I thought she was telling you to shut up. I don't even know what they're for. I was just like, I'll wrap it up, okay, Shannon. I'm sorry. <laughs> sign, sign, sign. No, it's for when you say the name of the show. Which, oh, which there was okay. one. There was one that you said. Yeah, probably. You say, it, you say it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and you've never been punched in the face. Nah. I've, I've also, here's the thing, because I've gotten a lot of shit because I've never really like been in a fight like that, but I always, I'm a glass half full guy, and I go, no, I've never had someone want to fight me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you are a big dude. Nobody's really going to want to fight you. Yeah, fair enough. You know? 
You kind of give off that vibe, like I don't want to fight this fucking guy. Yeah, but it did. I do. I do say this. It, I, I do think I should say that. Like, what the fuck am I trying to say? I do think people should get into some sort of type yeah. of fighting because I definitely had like this. It was this weird bit of fear and rage throughout yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah. Where it was like almost, it's like fear that I'm going to get into something, but also overcompensating yeah. so it might not happen. Yeah. So well, that was one thing that always, like, when I was training is that you didn't want to get into fights because you're being fucking smashed by this kid that's smaller than you. He just knows how to fight better. Than, and you're like, this is fucking crazy how well this kid is mm -hmm. punching me in the fucking face. How the fuck is this happening? That reminds me, too. I remember my buddy, John, when we were in, like, elementary school. He could, he was at, like, Tiger Shulman's or something. And, um, yeah, he, they had a special thing where it was like, bring your friends to a class. So we took, like, a karate class. And I remember the instructor hammered in. He was like, he told us. He's like, he's like I'll be straight up. Go for their balls. It's <laughs> yeah. like, end the fight as soon as possible because yeah. these can go badly very easily. And I remember, street fight, it don't matter. I, and I, I didn't grow up in like a, like the family I grew up in, like there was no sense of like, we're going to get into fights or anything, mm -hmm. you know? And like, so all these things, I was like, okay, got it. Avoid <laughs> fights. Yeah. Yeah. And so as, as an adult now, now that you uh, realize this rage that you have, you never considered training in some sort of martial art or something oh no it's purely a money thing <laughs> just, well, it is expensive yeah. and also straight i was i was talking to someone who does jujitsu like i really want to do jujitsu but um they were saying they were like you gotta go like three or four times a yeah. day and i don't ha i don't have that time right now it's yeah. definitely on the i was thinking about maybe trying boxing but yeah dude fucking <laughs> inflation's crazy <laughs> so <if laughs> and i'm fucking, bad with money <laughs> that's what sucks especially in new york around this area it's so fucking expensive to do it, it's yeah. such a pain in my ass like the one joint i was at it went from like 200 bucks a month to now it's like 220 oh, i'm like dude what the fuck it's are like you equinox doing here? prices it, no, it's, exactly it's funny too like I, in my 20s, I was so, I, I'll be honest, I was a little pretentious about it where I was mm. like, oh, I can use my word. I'm not going to get in a fucking fight. Like, yeah. fucking, and now that I'm older and I like didn't get that out of the way, I was like, I yeah. have this thing where I was like, I want to beat something <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I drink Miller Lights and fight kids at hardcore shows. <laughs> <laughs> you should, why don't you sign up for a fight at Skankfest and then you can just train with like the team for free. Yeah, if someone, oh, yeah. Can, yeah, if I can get in on the team for free, <laughs> I don't know. There's only like a month and a half left for this year, but I don't know if that's enough time. But like next year, you should do that. Yeah. you should like pick an opponent, make it a big thing over the year, and then you just train with the team. I'd be down for that. Yeah, as long as the opponent didn't have like, like years of uh, fighting under their belt. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was a similar playing field of uh, knowledge. Right. If you could pick a comedian. That you would choose to go against. Who <laughs> she hadn't started it already. She started the promotion. Who would you think it would be? Oh, Harrington, do you have something to say? Dude, Lemaire has been talking about taking a fight at Skankfest for as long as I can remember. I don't know, dude. Have you ever seen him do a Superman punch? He's also from Detroit. He definitely can oh, pull shit. out some. He's definitely gonna look at me and convince himself. I convince himself I've called him the N word a bunch, and then like harness that rage. Like what was that thing Michael Jordan said <laughs> in the one fucking uh, like Michael Jordan would just create scenarios in his head and get mad about yeah. it. Yeah, I don't so know. Would he, you if you had like uh, six months to train? A hundred percent. You would fight Lemare. Lemare? Yeah, six months. Yeah, I'd fight Lemare. If you had three months to train. Would I fight Lemaire? Yeah, probably. If you had one month to train. One month? How many times am I going? Like multiple uh, times well, a week? However, whatever time you have to do it. Yeah, why not? The more we're talking about it, why not? I mean, is there enough time, Harrington? There's 100% enough time. All right. Maybe we can make this happen. <laughs> I mean, we have till <laughs> the end <laughs> of September. So we have two full months. Two full months. Should we call Lemaire? Can I we call him? I mean, it's, we're in it, we're in it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we already got the posters made. Yes. <laughs> They're setting them up in the back over there. Okay, so Harrington's going to do that. And then while he does that, we're going to move over to our next segment, which is Scary Things. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that is fucking frightening. That that's for Figs because Figs uh, it has this weird fear of Michael Jackson. It's his irrational fear, so we added that for him. He's but afraid of Michael he's Jackson. He's afraid. He thinks that he's scared to like wake up and see Michael Jackson next to him. It's over. He's dead. That it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. Figs. Fear should have died with him. It's very weird. Uh, but this is the part of the show we talk about scary things, weird, creepy, unexplainable, possibly paranormal experiences. I'm saving you for next, mm-hmm. Doug, because I know that you have a story. Mm-hmm. So um, I overheard you outside saying you don't think you have a story, Andy. Yeah, I was because I was trying to think about it on the way up here. And I I remember when I so when I was younger, two movies, The Grudge and Signs. Now, Signs is I, I, I remember I watched it as an adult and I was like, oh, this movie sucks. That's like UFO stuff. Right? Yeah, but it was I remember at the time. At, so like they're hinting at aliens the whole time. And then towards the like middle of the end, there's a part where they have this footage from Mexico mm. and they're like in the middle of a party. And then an alien just walks by in the alley. Mm. I remember that freaked the fucking Dude, shit out of me. That like was a tall, one of the skinny only skinny one. right? Yeah, yeah. It's just tall, okay. skinny, yeah. green. Al- that was one of the only movies. That ever gave me like that fear feeling in my gut when that alien walks past. Dude, like- it, it it wigged the shit out of me to the point where like I I was like anxious about it for a year or two after. Yeah, that. I would literally be in my bedroom and like if I was alone and then like I would have this thing often as a kid where I'd be like nothing bad has happened for a while and I'd I'd be like. <laughs> I'd be like looking around adult. like something <laughs> and I I dude I would have moments like peering out the window being like I know there's aliens hiding behind those fucking trees. Jesus Christ. And then uh the grudge. F- I remember the grudge bugged the hell out of That's me. That's like uh the Japanese, like the girl in the yeah. corner with the like Yeah, I watched like, the um make that throat bu- clearing yeah, yeah. buffy. Uh, yeah. But no, and I think I'm like super susceptible to like in life. If we're in a scenario that just looks like a horror movie, I'm like, nope, let's do it. Let's go somewhere else. I don't like any of this. Like I get, su- I'm super susceptible to that stuff. So I think what I did was I've blocked myself from noticing paranormal things. <laughs> Cause I was telling Doug this too. Um, if you see in all those paranormal movies, what happened is like the ghost, the ghosts or the, whatever the fuck they are, are like bullies. It's like, they, because you're not going to get rid of them, and you're only going to give them more power if you do the things, if you get scared the way they want. Mm-hmm. So if I ever even like noticed a paranormal thing, I'd be like, I don't fucking care, <laughs> fucking knock my cups over. I don't give a shit. I'll knock my, I'll knock my cups over myself. I, you know, I, I think I've just never acknowledged any of it. Mm-hmm. So because I'm like, if I do, then it's real, and it's going to scare the fucking shit out of me. Which scares you more, like ghosts or aliens? Uh, ghosts. Cause really? Al- yeah, because there's like, more evidence of one existing. Is there though? More than more aliens, like UFOs and all that bullshit. You hear the government's keeping secrets but and alien like bodies. Whatever the government is telling you, it's probably like the opposite of that right. is true. Well, kind of. Here's the thing about aliens: is like if aliens get here, it's gonna we're all gonna be like, oh, there's the fucking alien. Yeah. Like you, you can't. You can't convince most people that there's a fucking ghost fucking with you mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. that. And it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll drive me fucking insane. That is true. More people are inclined to believe that there's an alien than there's a ghost. Because with an alien, it's like, if you think of it like with a rational brain, you're like, okay, like there's like an infinite universe and mm-hmm. like chances are there probably is something and it probably got here, or whatever. Right. That doesn't really, it doesn't change your view on reality as much as a ghost because then it's like afterlife and religion and all this crazy shit and that just blows your mind and i feel like the aliens are kind of like all right we're gonna take you we're gonna put some stuff up your butt all right have fun little guy you know be on your way <laughs> kill a couple the, cows yeah yeah, yeah exactly just gonna, skinwalker ranch that shit's fucking nuts <laughs> cows get their fucking organs removed and there's no blood or anything around oh, yeah. how the hell does that happen skinwalker ranch is yeah. like weird as shit it's that fucking is, nuts that's like a mixture of everything though it's like every paranormal thing yeah, kind of yeah. happens i want to go there I don't know if you should go there. I think I should. I don't know. You see Shannon missing a colon when she comes back, her liver's gone. So what do I use it for? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, totally fine. Like She's vegan. I don't they don't shit. It. They, they shit pellets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to move over to you, and then I have more questions for you, Andy. Before that, mm-hmm. uh, Harrington, do we have any progress with Lemaire before we continue? 
No, I uh, he he sent my call directly to voicemail. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. And has not responded to my text. Okay. So. Should I try to maybe just call him on speaker and just see if he answers? Yeah, give it a shot. Yeah, he, he, I don't think he'll big time you. No, I don't think he's... He's probably like... <laughs> he also might... I. They might, might record watching? Matt and Shane today. He might be doing stuff. Let's just see real quick. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He lets it ring for Shannon. Yeah, you've already gotten double my rest. <laughs> <laughs> he probably just silenced it already, so he's not even seeing it. Hi, LaMare. Are you busy right now? Uh, what's up? Okay. Really. okay, so you're you're on uh, The Thing Is podcast, and uh, we uh, Andy uh, Malafarina is here. And Hey, LaMare. Okay. Maybe yeah. okay. Hey, hey, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We were having a, we were having a conversation about how he has like rage inside him. He realizes that at concerts yeah. and how he's never really like trained in any kind of fighting. And then through the conversation, we came down to that if he has a couple of months to train for this skank fest, if we can make it happen, that he would be down to fight you at skank fest. Would you be down for that? <laughs> Andy, you don't want to fight me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be down to do it if you had like two months to train? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't sound excited. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> And it would be it would be so much because you guys would both train. It would be so much fun, and then you'd still be friends after. I feel like it would be a great <laughs> thing. But you said yes. If Andy wants to do it. I'll do it. It's done. It's done. Everybody <laughs> did it. Okay. Okay. We're gonna make the phone calls and make it happen afterwards. Harrington will be in touch with you. Thank you, Lamar. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Right, you got your first section fight. We did it, everybody. <laughs> it's so exciting. That a boy. Do you regret everything that just happened? I don't know. He doesn't sound like he wants to do it. He said, "Yeah, though." He didn't say no. Yeah, that is true. It, sounded, it was like, yeah. <laughs> no, it was he, like a I hostage. Guess. Yeah, but it was like an upward inflection. Like, yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, if there's nothing better yeah, to do, if sure. I, have to, I will. We're gonna now the whole point is just the discipline of the training part. But I feel like you're excited about that part, like the training. Yeah, I just need to learn form. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got strength. I just need – that's why – that's, like, my been my only thing is, like, I'm I'm going to – I would lose in fights out of the gate just because of instincts and stuff like that. But if I just get reps under my belt, mm -hmm. I'm, like, not too worried. And also, I don't have a – the, the only thing I'm worried about is if I lose him being annoying as fuck for the re <laughs> until I beat him up. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm worried about. <laughs> Has he ever trained in anything? Yeah. No, he's definitely... No, Lemaire's got... Lemaire's definitely got... I was actually joking with him before. I was like, dude, you need to start going to the gym because he could be fucking husky as shit. Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, Lemaire's got punching power. Um, I don't know if he has like... Yeah, he, he's kind of got, like, weird autistic focus, so there could be a thing, and, like, he could definitely turn it into a big thing in his head and take mm -hmm. it real serious. So there's a chance he could be a fucking absolute problem. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it'll be fun. I think so, too. Yeah. I'm excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get addicted to the training bit? I think so. I think so. I think it'd get be... Get all that aggression out, yeah. then you're tired. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Um, do fun. you want some... Did you finish yours? Oh, no, I'm good. Okay, I'll just keep going. I only drink light beer, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. He's That's already why, buzzed. <laughs> That's why I agreed. You gave me a lot of cucumber vodka. <laughs> no, it's very weak. <laughs> and mint. It is, yeah. Um, okay, so, Doug. Yeah. Last time you were on the show, you talked about, um, and I did look this up, by the way. Mm -hmm. You talked about when you were a kid having dreams about, like, a stick figure yeah. man. And then, um, and it, like, moving clothes around your room, and then you yelling, your parents would come in. So it's kind of like it it like connected with real life kind of more than a dream. Right. But the best part about it was that to, at the time that you were on the show, your current girlfriend said to you that she had the same exact dreams growing right. up. And so I Googled it and I looked up dreams about like a stick figure man and I did see drawings of it. 
And there were some people that were talking about like not dreams though. Mm-hmm. I saw like, people saying that they like saw this like stick figure thing. Yeah. I couldn't find pictures or like any like pictures of it or anything. Mm. But it oh damn it. I have to move it. <laughs> the thing is. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> but uh so people do talk about seeing this thing. Yeah. And then you also talked about um some of your DMT experiences. Yeah. Do you have a new scary things experience? Well, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like I don't know if I ever mentioned it on any of the podcasts I've ever done here, but my grandmother was uh, from Italy, so she believed in all like that witchcraft mm-hmm. bullshit, like Malocchio and and you know separating the pepper and the oil, and if it separates, somebody's talking shit about you and all this other stuff, like weird stuff. She always said that her house was haunted, mm-hmm. that by a lady, so that made it great for a little kid sleeping upstairs in the fucking attic in the last bed by yourself mm. because you would always feel like something was there because of what she said. But was she scared? Like, it was a bad thing? She was scared of the lady? No, she said that the lady was... Ju- she would just always sit at the steps while we were eating dinner downstairs <laughs> and watch... Oh, yeah, she told us that. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great as I'm trying to eat broccoli <laughs> robin sausage as a fat little fuck. You know, worried about eating my homemade pizza as some fucking crazy <laughs> bitch from the 50s is staring down at us watching us all, right? So she was always into like that weird shit and like if you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. And all all the Italian horns and the little fucking red horn that mm-hmm. they gave it, that's all to keep away the bad energy and all this the shit. Evil eye, okay? yeah. Saying all that, my grandmother was a rip roaring twat. <laughs> like complete cunt like you couldn't yeah. imagine anyone else worse of a pretty bad fucking human being all right Roaring. always she would always call my sister fat always say like you know you you need to and my sister's fucking 12 13 you go through that awkward oh, stage shit. you're up there always calling her fat telling her not to eat but would feed me like a fucking roly-poly but make sure my sister did always like just degrading her constantly. Oh. Always call. Same thing with my mother. She treated my my one aunt like this princess, like this this beautiful, spoiled the shit. Out. My treated my mom like shit. So because we were my mother's kids, she treated us like shit. Normal. Was your mom fat? <laughs> I don't even know. I, 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 well, she, no, she was. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. My mom was like anorexically thin, oh and that's probably why. Like oh that God. '80s thin with no ass or yes. nothing like. You could see the bones in the chest, mm-hmm. and that was sexy at the time. So I'm. I, I, now that you mentioned that, that probably had a lot <laughs> yes. to do why she did that. And um, so. She was just always a twat. I, I hate it. I couldn't say it. She used to hit me with fucking wooden shoes all the time, like with these soles that were wooden. They would bounce off the vertebrae in your spine, and you would feel that go right down your leg. She would lock me in bedrooms oh and stuff. Like, she always used to tell me, like, if you, Douglas, if you were my son, I'd cut your throat and you sleep. But, like, she always Yo, tell me what? shit like that <laughs> all the time. She would always say shit like that. Oh my God. Uh, fucking horrible. Jesus and Christ. So... I'm just telling you all this to give you like the background story of what the fuck just happened. It's okay to call her a twat. She is a twat. Yeah, (laughs) complete rip roaring twat. So she she was always like that. All right. And then as she got older, I guess that she regretted being that way. So she used to like guilt you. If it was just you and her in a room, she would just start crying. Like, I love you so much. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. You think I forgot everything? She would wrap me out to my father, then he'd beat my ass. So she was not a good fucking Later person. in life, she would still do that? Yeah, yeah all the oh, time. Okay. All the time. She found a switchblade in my room. She told my dad. <laughs> like, I'm like, what oh, the fuck is the matter with you? Yeah, oh, she would go through my shit. Yeah, exactly. Just She found weed in my bed. She told my father cigarettes, porn, mm. you know, back right. when you had magazines yeah. and you Italians told you Italians aren't slick. supposed to rap. Yeah, exactly. And she would drop <laughs> the dime every fucking time. She's like, no, don't worry, dog. I'm not going to tell daddy. And then sure enough, my father finds out and beats my fucking ass. Like, I'm like, you Christ. fucking asshole. Right? So just an awful human being to my sister, to me, to my mother. And then as she got older, I guess she regretted it. And the story on how she died, she may or may not have accidentally killed herself. Did you kill her? No, no. <laughs> yeah, she fell off of the roof uh, looking over. She's putting the up new shingles. She may or may not have gotten stabbed yeah, with my knife. You know what happened? Uh, she ran into my life 11 times. The gun went off. I don't know. It was faulty. The old lady whatever. goes to push it down the stairs. Yeah, exactly. Know. Like, hey, what's that? Mm, fucking get down there, Nona. And so 
the way she died was very grim, like she accidentally made her and you know, killed herself by taking an extra blood thinner because she wasn't getting enough attention because my grandfather was sick at the time. Mm. And she would always say shit like, of course, everybody wants to talk to him. And, you know, I'm making her sound Latina. But no, she's not. She's a town. <laughs> but and the men usually die first. No, this dude's fucking 91. Oh. Still can't, can't walk, but he's still going. But he's again, she would have outlived life without him. Her. <laughs> oh, he, he is, but he can't walk. And he would always <laughs> tell me like, Douglas, if I could have walked, I'd be a so much a better place. I wouldn't have cared about you no I was like mm. oh, he still hates her and bitches about her I'm like no no she's dead you don't have to worry about this no more it's yeah. fucking over right so like she was upset that he was getting a lot of the attention so she may or may not have taken an extra blood thinner why we don't know we even asked her we're like what'd you do that for she's like just shrugs her oh yeah okay well enjoy a stroke you know like that's what oh happens when you think this is the kind of woman that she was okay even my family might listen to this and get pissed <laughs> off, but fuck you. You know it's true. So, <laughs> we, a couple nights ago, I'm um, sleeping at my parents' house. They go down the shore. So, I go over there just to, I need a break from my apartment. Too many Dominicans yelling at each other. So, I go over there <laughs> and I'm like, it's just three o'clock in the morning. I need a break. Right? Bring a lady at the rooftop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So I would. Uh, <laughs> I already made rooftop jizz. <laughs> yeah. Want to go sleep in my Mamma Mia's bed? <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, I go there, and there's always like weird vibes in my fucking parents' house too. Like some weird, I don't fucking know. So I had this very, very vivid dream about my fucking grandma. I've never dreamed about her. I don't. I don't even really think about her that much. But I had this very vivid dream. I'm sleeping upstairs in my old room. And there's a staircase, and then there's a little bit of a hallway, and there's pocket doors. The pocket doors, they slide into the wall. Again, I, I had to be dream, but it felt so fucking real. It was so fucked up. I'm laying up, and, and she used to wake me up every time she would come over. I don't know why she would do that. I would hear, Douglas, I get up, and I would fucking spring a bit. What? Like, just so fucking pissed. I think she did it to break my balls. I really do. <laughs> so... I'm sleeping. I wake up to that. Like the Douglas, I get up, and like I'm like, you hear the yelling. I hear it, and I'm wow. like, I'm like, as if she's not dead. I'm like, no, no, what? What can you possibly want? Why do you always feel the need to wake me up? She comes walking up the steps, and I like, I'm even getting goosebumps telling this fucking story because that's how fucking real it felt. She comes walking in the bedroom, and I'm looking at her. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. <laughs> You're fucking dead. Wait. Yeah, I'm fucking like fucking dead. I saw you dead. Like, what are you doing you here? Rip roar and twat. Yeah, yeah, you rip roar. She probably heard me call it. I'm just, I'm gonna end up like haunted for the rest of my life for saying that on a fucking podcast now. So yeah, you did. You definitely didn't lessen the amount of time. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, she's gonna be back tonight, and I'm gonna call Shit Shannon. Can you delete that episode, please? No, 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 I listen to the thing. Why you call me a twat? I'm not ripper roaring. No. no. Hey, what is this a ripper roar? What is, what that? is I don't know what that uh. is. So she walks into the bedroom. And then I'm starting to like rub my like, you're fucking dead. You're not supposed to be here. This is fucked up. <laughs> right? She comes and lays down in the goddamn bed. And I and again, I'm not I don't remember if I was dreaming. It was it had to be a dream. I don't know. And I scooch over like the fuck are you doing? You're coming into fucking bed with your grandson? You fucking weird. Like, it was just weird. <laughs> like, and she looks at me, like, right in the fucking, and I'm staring at her. Now it's like the whole thing, like, you're dead has kind of washed away. And I'm like, all right, what, why, why oh, is yeah, this Oh, yeah, you're like, this is obviously something else. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. So I'm like, why is this all? I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> like, you want something from what? And she's like, and she starts crying. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was so mean to you. I don't mm. mean to be, I, I, you know, the way I grew up, it wasn't the best and all. And I know I took it out on you kids and your mother and I just apologize. And I'm so sorry. But again, she used to guilt trip us like that all the time. So you don't know if it's genuine or you really fucking mean it. See, I was I, wondering if she was just in hell being like, I, I would have never said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I say. No. I make a you pizza and a broccoli rab. No, I make like, a broccoli rab and a hair dome. <laughs> <laughs> Why you no hit? Hit him! <laughs> so, now, 
that dream. All right, so I wake up and I'm like, all right, did that really fucking happen or was that a dream? Because it felt like everything was going on. And it's not like weird dream shit, like where the background is blurry. Mm -hmm. I, it was all vivid. Well, since that fucking happened, again, I'm at my parents again this weekend. How long ago was gone. that time when this happened? That was two weeks ago. Okay. And mm. then this just happened this weekend. Okay. I'm at my parents' house again. I'm shaving my head. I hear my fucking name being called. So you're awake. I'm awake. I'm shaving my head. And I hear, I could, I fucking heard it vividly. It's not like there was a background in a song that I've listened to a million times. Yeah. But I hear my with the Italian accent too. Douglas! And I'm like, hmm. I'm like, I pause the music and I, and I, look, as much as I think I'm prepared for life and as much as I think I could face it, I face down a mother bear with her two cubs and I walked away from that situation and I kept my composure. This was not that. <laughs> this, I had that bubbly gut feeling like, <gasps> like where I can't talk and I just go like, I give one of these around the corner. I'm like, just to kind of look to see if somebody's coming up the steps and I'm like, if I hear that again, I'm going to piss my fucking pants. There's no way that, I, I know I just heard it. As clear as yeah. fucking day. I know I just heard her call my name. And I just like, all right, like you said, that didn't happen. Just whatever, go back to doing what you're doing. Start shaving my head again. I'm wearing a white, I feel something poke me in the fucking back. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. And, and I told you, I don't believe in this yeah. ghost shit. I don't, but mm. I'm like, could it be from the dream that maybe my fucking brain is playing tricks on me? Is this really happening to me? Or I don't know, maybe the beater that I was wearing just settled on my body or something, like because I was shaving my head and like maybe because I had my arms up that it just fell off my shoulder. I don't know, but it's been fucking me up ever since I had that dream. How long ago did she pass away? During COVID, so. A couple of years ago. 2020? And then, and you've spent the night at your parents' house other times yeah. since before this happened. Right, yeah. So maybe you need to, I mean, whether it's real or not, even if it's just like a subconscious thing, maybe you need to go there and give forgiveness. And then whether it's subconscious and it's like fake and it's in, in right. your mind or whether it's real and she's still there and she needs your forgiveness, maybe that will... I Set think if free. she hears this podcast, Shannon, <laughs> she's not going to forgive shit. She's going to be like, how dare you talk that way about it? No, I'm not. <laughs> wait, let's ask the magic eight ball. Oh, Jesus Christ. What do you want to ask it? Um, wait, what should I ask it? What do you want to ask it about your grandma? Uh, um, um, were you really there that night or was I fucking dreaming? <clears throat> um, it is definitely so. Damn. So maybe you need to go to your parents house mm. and then just like, i'm not going back there ever again <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Never yeah, i would, get, there new, again. I would <laughs> get new parents yeah yeah fuck this shit yeah not fucking going back to that but maybe go into your bedroom like during mm. the day or something when it's not like freaking you out and then mm. just be like find a place to like understand that like she had probably a shitty growing up like mm. you talked about on mike vacuum investigates right and then she probably had like a shitting a shitty upbringing yeah. and she had a shitting problem too yeah, she did yeah. she she actually did. Yeah. Yeah. that's very true she passed it on to you and maybe this will make you maybe that's why yes. son of a oh. bitch it's, it's a family it. curse yes. <laughs> but maybe try it and then let us know what happened well here's the th i know the exact room she died in in her house mm -hmm. and uh Maybe I should go with that. Listen, if I'm doing this, I'm going to do it. I, it's nighttime. All right. It's not <laughs> okay, daytime. Yes. We're doing this and full. record it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and then you see me in. just turn white, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just disappear. We never hear from you. Yeah, again. exactly. Then then you would be doing the video, be like, all right, let's see this fucking. <laughs> and, then, and then you hear a voice, and you're like, I'm so scared. All I'm right. So look, scared. yeah, I'm not afraid of this woman. All right. I live my life with her. And as soon as she shows up, just. I'm shooting myself. I'm boobing myself. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, I loved your homemade raviolis. That was great. That's a great story. And will you really do this? Like, will you really go there? If I'm being honest, no. <laughs> I don't want to invite. It's You're like never going to go to your parents' house ever again? No, I will, but not like for like this year. It's like he said, you know, you got to pretend that it doesn't happen because we've all seen, uh, what was that movie uh, with Ed and Jane? You know, the, the ghost people remember? oh ed and lorraine warren yes yes what yeah, was the name the of that conjuring movie? yeah and remember when 
the doll pretends to be somebody else and they welcome the little yes. girl's and then it, I'm not welcoming okay. that shit. That specific, okay. sorry, okay. that specific movie I went to go see then I got high at a buddy's house later oh, and I no. was like, I remember I was like walking home and it was like a little foggy and the, the light outside <laughs> my parents' house. I was like, yo, fuck all of this shit. <laughs> Dude, I do not do good with any of that stuff. That's why I just yeah. avoid it. Can you go with Doug to his parents' house? No. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk great. to anyone named Doug for the rest of my life <laughs> um before we wrap do you have a question to ask april andy um i don't know does lamare actually want to fight <laughs> training now yes Ooh. Straight up, yes. i swear to god i'm not lying about any of the answers i get here so that's it we have all the answers we were seeking today wonderful. oh good wonderful we're gonna do a quick round of plugs and we'll get out of here doug what would you like to plug uh follow me on instagram at the doug Urum. um i'll be in poughkeepsie i think it's yeah this saturday um i'll be at the comedy dojo in august and there's one more i have another show in queens coming up on august 4th where i'll be quote unquote Headline. It's not really headline. It's only twenty minutes. Say it. It's yeah. Headlining. Yeah. It's a quote unquote because I, I don't like. It's not headline. It's twenty fucking. Minutes. It's a long. You might set. get they blood dropped some, on yeah. you guys. They do that sometimes though. <laughs> when you're last doing twenty, yeah. they'll be like, "You're headlining." Yeah, and, and I'm like, like "No, I'm not." That. Yeah, this is a regular feature spot. Don't you fuck with me. <laughs> um, but follow me on Instagram. I post all my dates and all that bullshit on there. So. Go follow it. And maybe you see a video of Doug's grandma on there. Who knows? I will shit my pants. Because <laughs> I know if she heard the podcast while she's still alive, this would never, ever not be brought up anywhere we go. Okay, but could you forgive her? <sighs> yeah. I mean, what else is there left? You know what I mean? What are you going to do? Stay mad? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. so there it is. I don't even hold grudges against uh, yeah. people that are alive. You as a I mean? as a guy who's a professional grudge holder, yeah. it's not good. <laughs> no, it, it, it hurts you. Oh my god, dude! I literally like recently I figured out how to like let things go. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, this is a life hack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it I, just feels so much better. You, you do. Know? I had oh, an ex girlfriend recently reach out to me. She goes, "I know you hate me." I go, "That was four years ago." <laughs> Could you imagine what kind of part if I still hate? I don't dude, care about you. You just dummy. going through the day being like, "Wait, you don't have to be mad about everything." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's just much easier to let it go. Maybe tap back into that anger, though. You might need it soon. I can tap. I can yeah. tap back yeah. into it. Yeah, I well, should try. I can to turn it emotional. on. I can turn it on easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to plug, Andy? Uh, Pains in the mouth is a podcast with Lamar Lee and Nate Marshall. If you like music, if you went to Warp Tour twice in high school, listen to my music podcast, Drag the Lake, and when you want to hear me rant about bullshit, no more heroes. Also, this summer, uh, I'm gonna be with Robbie Bernstein on some summer porch tour dates. Uh, go to his website. I think it's RobbieTheFire.com. He's got a weekend in uh, PA in Maryland I'm going to be on, and then there's like a weekend in Austin and shit that I'm going to be on. But yeah, either way, go check out those weekends. Go see Robbie and do a bunch of cool stuff with your life. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram at ShannonLee6982. Wherever you listen to the show, you can also watch it live for free every single Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern at GasDigital.com slash live. That's absolutely free. The best way to support the show and help us go to our ghost hunt <clears throat> is to go to gasdigital.com and use promo code just for the month of August, promo code TTI30. You're going to get a 30-day free trial instead of the seven-day free trial. And then you get access to everything on the Gas Digital Network, Legion of Skanks, Real Ass Podcast, Mike Fecchione Investigates, the SER Show, and all the other shows on the network, all for free for one month, TTI30. If you listen on iTunes, YouTube, wherever you listen, make sure to rate, review, tell a friend, subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you guys so much. What? What am I forgetting? Uh, and every new subscriber that signs up with TTI 30 is also going to help us get towards our goal of 100 new subscribers, which will trigger the ghost hunt. Yes. Ooh. And we are almost almost halfway there. After this next month rolls over, mm. I'll have the next numbers. We're almost halfway there. So please keep those numbers coming in. Uh, uh, if you want to share your story, uh, your bad things, scary things, or bad date stories, send it to the thing is podcast.gmail.com. And then back to what I was saying before, if you listen on iTunes, YouTube, wherever else you listen, well, we appreciate all of the algorithm comments. Just leave something in there. Have a conversation. Every little bit uh, helps the show to grow. Go to merch engine, merchengine.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for being on the Thank show. You Thank you for having me. We'll be back next week. Bye, guys.